Hi, I'm Lewis Cicaldi, Product Manager for Synergy Multiviewer, and I'm here to take you through the fourth in our series of Multiviewer details and go through Multiviewer alarms. So if we turn to my machine here, I've got a configured and installed copy of Synergy Multiviewer ready to take you through what alarms are and what we can do with them. So here is Multiviewer running, looking at a few off-air streams. And if I hit the tab we've not worked with much before, Alarm Settings, we can take a look at what kind of alarms we can generate in here. So uh, we can look at the, the categories of alarms. The top three are data-related alarms. So do I have a data signal, an RTP alarm, a video alarm, and an audio alarm? So these are going to fire if I'm missing uh, the data streams or the channels for any of these. Then we get down to some content analysis alarms. So we can generate alarms if audio is too loud uh, or if we're clipping. We can generate alarms if the audio goes silent, if the video goes still or black, uh, or if we're missing particular values inside the VANG, so the closed caption or the AFD go missing. Uh, finally, we get SDI, you know, have we lost the SDI signal, uh, or has the Dolby dial norm values gone outside of the, the ranges we've specified as valid? Uh, and the last thing we've got in here is uh, special to Synergy. Uh, does the multiviewer have all of its licenses or has it lost any licenses? So if this is running as a back-end service, you might want to alarm if the dongle goes missing or the license expires. So let's take a look at some of these in action. Let's use a really easy one to start with, which is total loss of data. So I'm going to tick up here the global enable audible alarm. So you should hear a voice come out of the speaker uh, when this trips. And then I'm going to specify that if I lose data, that's a critical alarm if I've lost data for more than 100 milliseconds. So we've set that pretty close. So if I now hit apply, we'll configure the system to complain if it loses that. So the multiviewer will quickly take its new settings. Right, so multiviewer has now come back with that setting. So up here, I'm uh, playing back the transport stream off air so I can actually stop it and we can see the alarm. So if I click stop, the top left BBC stream should stop. So that's stopped and we've heard the critical alarm notification uh, and we can see uh, the red indicator saying loss of video, loss of audio, and actually loss of network. Uh, so we've raised an alarm, and we've got the blinking things on screen. Uh, if I now start the stream up again, it should have a little, little flash and a blink, and it should come back and go green. So now we can see that the alarm has cleared, and everything's gone green again, uh, and that's, that's been completed successfully. Uh, let's look at another alarm now, which is content analysis. So let's take a look at the audio. So this is a pretty easy one to mess with. If I now choose that I want the audio to be a, a major level alarm, uh, I can say if we get any sound above minus 10 dBs for more than 50 milliseconds, raise an alarm. So that's going to trigger quite a lot. So I'm going to hit apply now to take the audio analysis settings on. So that's now restarted and should be looking at the audio. So we can see on here we've now got some visual on-screen indicators that, that there's audio clipping occurring on BBC One and on this other channel in the bottom right. Uh, as well as the fact that it's happening on channel one and channel two, blinking on and off screen. So we might want to look at this and say, we don't care about the second channel on BBC One. We don't care about this one down here at all. So we can pop into the input settings. So here we can filter discrete uh, alarms away entirely. So we can go to this bottom right channel and say, no, don't analyze the audio at all. Just be happy with whatever audio you get. Hit apply. And now Multiviewer restarts. And the bottom right player should no longer present any alarms at all. So we're showing off now uh, visual alarms popping on and off because the audio clips for just a fraction of a second before it clears. Uh, so it's great when you want to have someone sat in front of the screen looking at these things, but we might want a historical log or some other third party system to take action if alarms happen. So this brings us to the notify plugins uh, tab. So in here we can see all the different ways that alarms can leave multiviewer. We can log to a file, we can log to the Windows event log, we can generate emails or SNMP traps, we can make HTTP post notifications, which, which is the preferred mechanism for integrating with enterprise service buses or any other modern API system. And finally, uh, you can use an SMS notification. So in here, you can uh, plug in a compatible 3G uh, stick and it will generate SMS messages. Uh, I would recommend though that you use the integrated filter here so here we would say that we only want an SMS message if a critical alarm has happened and not just receive a message at 2 a.m. that audio clipping is happening on a channel. So the setting of the severity type can be very important in terms of filtering the actions we take. But for now, what we're going to do is just show you the basic file notification. So if I turn that on to print to file any alarms of major or above to a file on my desktop and then hit apply, Multiviewer will restart now 
and almost immediately we see a little file appear on the desktop and if I pop it open we should very quickly see it's filling up quite rapidly with audio clipping alerts because we set that audio clipping at far too stupid a level and we can see that we're getting audio clipping on channel one and channel two and then we can see that they're clearing again uh, so for every time an alarm is raised or cleared we can see an entry has been made in the text file so that can provide a, a nice audit log of what's happened uh, if you're not using uh, a fully integrated API set like the HTTP post. So that's shown you the different notification mechanisms we've got for different alarms and we've shown you the different alarms we can make from data loss through to contextual analysis of picture and audio. Uh, what we can also do in here is filter what this is on. That's the end of this session. We've got one left now about performance scaling. I hope you join me in that. Thanks very much.